We bring you the latest updates from the PNA Newsroom. The national government under President Ferdinand Marcos vows to continue to prioritize efforts to enhance disaster preparedness and response. In his weekly vlog, Marcos underscored the need to improve local preparedness and response to prevent and reduce the impact of disasters on communities. Ang disaster response at disaster preparedness natin ay prioridad ng ating pamahalad na lalo pang pagandahin o palakasin. May mga nakikita pa akong mga bagay na maaring improve dahil ang mga bagyo ay bahagi na ng pamumuhay natin dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya naman, ang ating disaster preparedness at disaster response ay kinakailangan may maayos na maayos na system. Marcos said planting trees will help reduce the impacts of climate change and ultimately build climate resilience through joint efforts. Meanwhile, Marcos acknowledged the need to improve aid distribution amid efforts to assist those affected by severe tropical storm Paeng. Dapat ay padaliin natin yung pagbibigay. Dapat ay abot kagad. Nasa lanta na nga eh. Yan ang mindset na gusto kong sundan ng lahat ng ating ahensya pagdating sa disaster response. Na ang tulong ay wala nang pinipili. He said he would continue to strengthen the whole of government approach to disaster preparedness. Congress expects to approve the proposed 2023 national budget by December or before Christmas. Senators are expected to continue the deliberations on the proposed 5.26 trillion peso budget as the 19th Congress resumes today. Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri said they have two weeks of plenary deliberations. After this, they will approve the 2023 General Appropriations Bill on third reading in the Senate as early as the third week of November. Zubiri said the Senate subcommittees carefully studied the agency's programs to ensure that the 4.9% increase from this year's budget is warranted. House Speaker Martin Rowaldes, meanwhile, said they target to ratify the GAB and approve priority measures of the Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council before Christmas break starts on December 18. Romualdez said among the priority sectors are job creation, health and economic recovery from the impact of COVID-19, with agriculture as the major engine for growth and employment. And in Taguig City, at least 10,000 learners, teachers, and other individuals received COVID-19 vaccines through the city government's school tour one-stop shop, Bakuna. The vaccination program was held in support of the Department of Health's Pinas Lakas Immunization Campaign and in time for the resumption of full face-to-face -face classes. In a statement, the Taguig local government said, Primary shots and boosters have been given to children in 23 elementary and high schools since August 15, 2022. The city government is set to visit more schools to conduct COVID-19 vaccination and encourage more people to get booster shots. All eligible individuals can walk into Taguig vaccination hubs from Monday to Friday at Lakeshore Vaccine Information Center, Venice Grand Canal Mall, and Bonifacio High Street. All barangay health centers also offer COVID-19 vaccination to the eligible population every Monday, Tuesday, or Friday. The Presidential Commission for the Urban Poor and the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, are set to unite efforts to give access to livelihood and job opportunities for urban poor groups. A memorandum of agreement will be signed in time for the PCUP celebration of Urban Poor Solidarity Week on December 7. This year's UPSW theme is the PCUP and the urban poor sector together meeting the challenge of the new age in support of President Ferdinand R. Marcos' pro-poor initiatives and alleviation program. Late last month, the PCUP renewed its cooperation with the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office as it enhances the administration's poverty alleviation program, particularly for persons with disabilities and senior citizens. The PCUP is a commission under the Office of the President tasked to promote and protect the rights of the urban poor, including informal settler families. And that is the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. 
For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are also shown on the social media pages of the Office of the Press Secretary and on Radio Pilipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I am William Theo. We tell stories that inspire change.